Okay, team, let's keep going and uh, let's do some more problems. Now, they're going to get a little trickier. And what I want to do is uh, they're all going to kind of, the rest of these problems in this section are all going to be built off this idea that when we do decoding activities, that, that means when we take, you know, when a student comes across a word in a text and they take that word and they start to match up the letters in that word uh, with their corresponding sounds to pronounce a word. So they match up letters with sounds and they do decoding. Decoding can be, and, and decoding skills, phonic skills involving letter sound correspondence can be in reinforced, uh, supported, strengthened by doing encoding skills. Encoding is when we take sounds and we map out those sounds in oral language, in, in words in oral language, and we map them out to their, their correct spelling pattern. So when we go from sounds to letters or from, um, we take sounds and match them up with their spelling or or uh, 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 graphemes, that's called orthographic mapping, phoneme, phoneme, grapheme mapping, or, or spelling, that's, that's encoding. When we do that, when we do those activities, that reinforces decoding. So let me write that down. Encoding uh, reinforces decoding. So if we do a spelling test, and on that spelling test, a, a student practices um, words with sh in it, right? And they and they practice, you know, the sh is the sh sound in like fish. Well, that type of encoding activities is only going to reinforce uh, the student's decoding. And it's going to lead to them uh, recognizing and decoding words faster as they go through the decoding process. So encoding and decoding support each other. Now, this idea is going to be reflected in the questions that we have. And this is sort of a profound idea. So when we do encoding activities, I want you to remember, encoding activities support those decoding activities, those reading activities, and vice versa. All right, that's the quick review. Now let's get to these uh, really juicy questions. I want you to take two minutes, and I want you to read this one over here. This is a fun one. Pause me now and read it to yourself, and when you're done, unpause, okay? All right, pause me now. Unpause. I had time to look it over. It's from the 190 test. This is a nice example, sort of that mid-level to upper intermediate question. It's got a lot of scenarios in it, a lot of vocab in it. Uh, I'm going to just start by reading it and then we'll discuss it. Okay. It says, which of the following statements provides the best rationale for incorporating spelling instruction into a first grade reading program? So why would we do spelling or encoding activities uh, if we're in a reading program in the, in, for decoding activities, why is spelling, how spelling helping with reading? Hmm. Is it because spelling instruction promotes phonological sensitivity by teaching students how to break words into onsets and rhymes and recognize common phonograms? I love this answer. It's not the right one. It's wrong, but it's a really, it's got a lot of juicy vocab, right? Phonological sensitivity, that's referencing phonological awareness skills and phonological and phonemic awareness skills, so sound skills. So the ability, if you, you have phonological awareness, you have phonological sensitivity, if you're able to tell if words uh, have similar beginnings and endings, like, like rhyme and alliteration. You have phonological sensitivity if you're able to take a word like wonderful and identify that wonderful has three separate vowel sounds, three syllables. You have phonological sensitivity if you're able to do onset and rhyme and, and, and break up a word based off onset and rhyme. So that is, uh, that's phonological sensitivity. And recognize common phonograms. A phonogram is a symbol that represents a sound or one sound here. I have a slide for, for this right here. You may want to take a moment and just review what a phonogram is. Just pause the video and read this, but I'm going to give you the basic definition. A phonogram or another way of saying it is a grapheme. A phonogram is a spelling pattern that represents one sound. Now, that's just, that's, that's what a grapheme is. It's a spelling pattern like CH that represents one sound, ch, or IGH in the word, you know, hi, right? That IGH is a spelling pattern that represents one sound, I, right? Or, uh, right, yes, or A in the word cat. It's that one letter is a spelling pattern that represents the A sound or A sound, depending on where, on how it's presented uh, and if there's any other words surrounding it. So, 
So these are all, I want you to think, if you ever see a phonogram, it's a, it's a spelling pattern or um, that matches up with one sound. It's another way of saying a, a grapheme. Now, back to this one right here. You see all the juicy vocab here? Each one of these things, phonological sensitivity, onset and rhyme, phonograms, even though this is the wrong answer, each one of these ideas, you could go back and, and clarify the vocab and you'll only get better, right? We're going to go, this is not the right answer. We're going to remember that a spelling instruction reinforces uh, encoding activities, reinforce decoding activities, and decoding activities are going to support encoding activities, right? That's the idea that we're trying to match up. Is it, uh, is it B? Spelling instruction streamlines the reading process by focusing on a finite set of orthographic guidelines, which accelerates students' reading development. That's interesting. They're using some new things here. Spelling instruction streamlines, I guess that means makes, makes it easier or faster, simpler, streamlines the reading process by focusing on a finite set, a couple of rules uh, for spelling rules, which accelerates the student's reading development. Um, I don't know if it's that. I mean, it, that is so, sort of true. When we do spelling instruction, we focus on a couple of key patterns, and it's true. If we could put, if we could narrow it down to maybe ten different patterns, that is that is a finite set of rules, and that's going to help with spelling. Though those spelling rules will accelerate and help a student with decoding. I think that's that's true. That you know, by targeting just a couple of key rules, a handful of rules, it will accelerate you know the reading process. That's not the the exact answer, right? We don't do it, spelling does help with decoding. But what that makes it sound like is um, if I teach a couple of spelling rules, they're going to be all set and, and OK with uh, they're going to be super fast with their uh, decoding. And I think it's more uh, de decoding helps with spelling. You learn some more spelling rules. It's going to get a little bit better with decoding. Then you're going to be able to decode a little better and you get more exposure to spelling rules that are good. I think it's more of a give and take, give and take back and forth. OK. So it's not so much that if you learn just a couple of these finite rules, you're going to be all set with reading. I'll cross that one off. Okay. Notice the writer of this put a lot of details in. In fact, if we analyze this, sorry, I'm taking a long time with this. I'm just get excited with a question like this because I think that the writer took an awful lot of time and thought to present to you scenarios that take an awful lot of time and thought, right? Yes. And, and that's a way of slowing you down by giving you a really uh, juicy answer choice that's not correct. We're looking for this idea of how spelling supports reading. OK, how about uh, how about C? Spelling instruction facilitates students vocabulary development by introducing them to new grade level academic words throughout the year. So, you know what, all these statements here there's a lot of accuracy to. I mean, a lot of the spelling tests that you do, you are trying to target um, tier two and, and maybe even content specific vocabulary uh, in your, your content area. So you might do a spelling test on, you know, biology words, producer, consumer, decomposer, that would be tier three, or general academic words, you might do, you might do that. And, and it's true by doing spelling instruction on those tier two and tier three words, that will help them expand their vocab and improve their reading overall. Uh, I don't think that's the, the rationale between spelling instruction and reading for first grade though, right? Maybe for the upper grades, but for first grade, what are we doing? Let's get to the answer. Let me circle first grade. That's the key. Spelling instruction reinforces the student's knowledge of phonics patterns. Right? Or that's exactly what we said before. Spelling, how does spelling support reading? That's exactly what we were looking for. Spelling reinforces students' knowledge of phonics pattern. And, and how does that help them? Well, if we do more spelling activities, that encoding activities that reinforces their decoding activities, they'll get better at decoding. And what is that going to do? It's going to build their automaticity 
uh, or their fluency, their ability to, uh, to recognize words with proper speed, accuracy, and expression. And that's going to lead to more comprehension or construct meaning while reading. So if we want to improve decoding skills, maybe we do some encoding skills, and that's only going to uh, further help them with fluency, which will help them with reading comp. Okay, team, I've talked a lot about this question. It's a good one. Um, read over this one here again. Think about how it says that basic statement, encoding activities or spelling activities reinforce reading. See if you can get that connection. Notice that all these things are sort of uh, distracting. They're all, they're all kind of distracting. Spellings because of vocabulary. Spellings because of phonological sensitivity. Spelling streamlines, you know, orthographic guidelines, you know, it's finite skills. This is all kind of well-written wrong answers. See if you can see that this and this match up with this one right here. Spelling enforces decoding, right? All right, good question here. Uh, take a look at it. This is from that test. This one. Uh, right here. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, it's let answers D and it's this one right here. Great test. If you're a reading specialist or a teacher taking like the foundations of reading or science of teaching reading or RECA, and you want kind of like a challenge, that's a good test for that. Okay. Uh -huh.